Joining our closing bell exchange now, we've got Monica Mehta from Seven Capital, Doug Sandler from Riverfront Investment Group, Mark Martiak from Premier Wealth Management, and Kenny Polkari here with us from O'Neill Securities. Welcome to everybody, Kenny. So, um, concerned about markets here, uh, encouraged by them? Has everybody thrown in the towel and said maybe we do get a, a leg up? I, I, I think we've had that leg up. I think I think the action that we're seeing today and the action that we even saw yesterday where the market is just churning, right? There's no reason at the moment for it to push higher. The news is out. The ECB news is out. They're waiting for retail numbers on Thursday for some further direction. But the market just feels tired at the moment. It's got to catch up. So it's either going to churn here and wait for the data to catch up or at some point it's going to start to drift back. But by no means I think it's going to... We're not looking for any big sell-off, and nor do I think it's going to move higher at the moment. I, I was literally thinking exactly what you were saying in the way I was going to ask Rob Morgan the question. Is the market tired, or is it simply just taking a breath? Well, Rob Morgan's not here. Why don't you answer that, Kenny? I, I, it feels tired to me, right? You can feel over the last couple of days, it just the, there's not a lot of volume. There's not a lot of excitement. There's excitement in one sector, M&A for sure, but everything else just kind of, kind of seemed to be just, just trudging along, right, as the, market, as the market churns. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see for a while. Monica, there were a couple of interesting developments in the data this morning. The first was that job openings looked pretty good recently, uh, small business sentiment, but both improved, and the prices uh, index there indicates a little bit of pricing pressure in the pipeline. Uh, what is, how do you invest that? How do you if, you, if you like this story, think it might be sustainable, what's an investor to do? Well, I think it's telling you that um, various aspects of the economy have a little bit more confidence, but as far as small business owners are go, confidence doesn't help them grow their business. Money helps them grow their business, and liquidity continues to be a big problem for this sector of the economy. I mean, you had a story just um, a few minutes back about housing and how housing prices seem to have stagnated, and when you look at the small business business community, 28 million small business owners in America, it's always been hard for them to get mortgages. And since January, it's become even harder with income verification standards. So while you may be looking at all of this data thinking there, there are pockets of opportunity, I think the real crux where job creation comes in, the small business owners, they're still scratching their head, trying to find liquidity, trying to find money. And until we have a solid basis here, you're not going to see that engine churning. Yeah. Doug, one of the issues, I guess, is it's hard yep. to find bargains out there. People don't know where to look. I mean, the market's gone up so much, maybe they're afraid to put their, their toe in the water at, this, at these levels. And sometimes you got to pay a reasonable price for a great company, and I think that's the, the environment we're in. Buffett has that great quote where he says, I'd rather buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. And today's economy, today's S&P 500, is a number of wonderful companies. We got great profit margins, great balance sheets. I don't think you're going to get them cheaper. So the economy is just starting to turn. Uh, I would note on the small business lending that we're actually starting to see lending go up as well. And banks are always late to react, but I think we're in the early cycle there. So there's not a lot not to like. Here's um, what's interesting that you about all pay... that, though. Yeah, no, finish what? the thought. Sorry, Doug. I said the fact that you have to pay a fair price and you can't get a bargain anymore, that doesn't mean the market won't keep going up. Um, I think you're going to pay an expensive price one or two years from now, and that's what we're trying to get ahead of. Yeah, and that's a point many people have made here, Mark. It, it kind of relates to what I was going to ask about. I think we can show here, but today it looks like we've hit a new all-time low in terms of yields on the junk bond index in most people in this market. I knew you were going to work that in somewhere. <laughs> because, look, I, I realize that it's not you know front and center, but it should be, because this does tell you something, especially if this rally across stocks, across the credit market, Mark, has further to go. Do you think there's froth? Are these companies, are, are, are we basically propping up zombie companies in the U.S.? Is this corporate subprime or is it healthy? Uh, what do you make of this development? I, I believe it's healthy. And in fact, I like the high yield muni bond market. The inflows there have uh, reached about 22 consecutive weeks at about 4.7 billion. So I think uh, rates, yes, are going up, uh, or rather rates coming down, prices going up. But uh, I like fixed income across all, all categories. Even both at these investment levels? Rate, wow. Even at, even at these levels, I do, because I think it's important, and I advise my clients to be well diversified with fixed income, because we all would agree on this panel, and I think you would as well, Kelly and Scott, there will be a pullback. 
We see a pullback coming, and that pullback could occur sometime this summer, uh, somewhere in the range between 5 and 6%. So how do you mitigate risk? You mitigate risk by being well diversified, no, having non-correlated assets. I don't mean to harp on this point, but this is what's so interesting, is that to some extent you're trying to mitigate a risk that has yet to pan out by going into something that may be much riskier because the yields have never been lower and the quality may be deteriorating. Well, uh, quality is not a, is, is not that much of an issue when you're when you're dealing with with your advisors and professional institutional money managers, especially on the fixed income side. They're trained. Their analysts know what credit quality looks like. So I, I, I still think uh, fixed income is a good place to be. But I like where we're at uh, currently with the equities market, and I see it uh, grinding higher. Kenny, does more money have to come out of bonds for stocks to go higher? Well, I, I think more money does have to come out of bonds, absolutely. But I also think that it's going to come out very cautiously, right? I don't think people are just going to be going all in. I think people remain cautious. There almost feels like they think there's this other shoe to drop. And the more they wait, the more it feels like it gets away from them. And then you have that play catch-up kind of a game, which is exactly when I think that you shouldn't be running into the market. Well, I mean, right? But don't you think if, you know, Jan Hatzi has some Goldman's coming up in a moment. Right. He already is, is making headlines for saying that we're getting into a, an area finally of above trend growth. If that really is the case and it's sustainable, right. won't you have a lot of money coming out of fixed income well, into I, stocks? Well, I think you will, but I think what's going to happen is that people are going to have to wait. They're going to have to be really convinced that that's, that that's what they see, right? They're going to have to be convinced that the job market's getting better, that they their own personal situation is getting better, that their housing market is stabilized, right? This whole housing story that you guys have coming up, I mean, listen, we've been talking about it for a while. Even the town where I live in, these houses are just sitting there. They are not moving at all, and there's a lot of them on the market. And so until people feel more comfortable, I think you're going to have this kind of this cautiousness. All right. Thank you. Would, Thanks, everybody. Caution. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to get yeah, a last quick one, Mark? I, I, as you, I, I as you all know, that's not, the, that's not the same in the Manhattan market. You, yeah, you well, try to locate inventory yeah. in, the, in, the, in the one to three bedroom range, and it's scarce. And that's you can't not find the case it, so in it's Texas not a, either. It's not in Texas, real estate is, and particularly residential, is still zooming up. Well, it's very, you know, housing is very, very regional. I think that's exactly. also very important. That's what Bill was saying here as well. <laughs> Miss you, Bill. All right. We got to.